Hi, I'm Todd Fernando, the Victorian Commissioner for LGBTIQ plus communities. I'm a descendant of the Kalari peoples of the Ratchari Nation and I identify as a queer man. I'd like to acknowledge the ancestors of the lands on which we're all on today, both past and present. Welcome to my part of Human Rights Week 2021, where some of the Victorian Commissioners invite you to engage in activities and start or continue conversations about human rights. Before I talk about the rights of LGBTIQ plus people in Victoria, I would like to talk to you about how human rights are protected in an international context. We observe Human Rights Day every year on the 10th of December because that's the day the United Nations General Assembly adopted in 1948, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Out of these have fallen some other covenants and conventions, which include the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. These don't create extra rights, but explain how human rights apply to these people in our societies. There are other layers of treaties as well, such as the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, or commonly known as UNDRIP. But did you know there is also a set of agreed, agreed principles that explain the obligations countries have in applying international human rights law in relation to sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, and sex characteristics. These are called the Yogi Yogyakarta principles. In 2006, a distinguished group of international human rights experts met in Yogyakarta, Indonesia, to outline a set of international principles relating to sexual orientation and gender identity. The result was the Yogyakarta Principles, a universal guide to human rights, which created a binding international legal standard with which all states must comply. Then, in 2017, these were extended with the Yogyakarta Principles plus 10, the subtitle tell you all you need to know. Additional principles and state obligations on the application of international human rights law in relation to sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, and sex characteristics to complement the Yogi Yogyakarta principles. Catchy, right? These additions were adopted to supplement the Yogi Yogyakarta principles. By 2017, international human rights law had a better understanding of the emerging violations suffered by persons on grounds of sexual orientation and gender identities, and the recognition of the distinct and intersectional grounds of gender expression and sex characteristics. Because our own Victorian Charter of Human Rights and Responsibilities draws down from international human rights instruments, we can look to international human rights law for guidance on how to understand the rights of people. While that instrument may seem far removed from us here in Victoria, it's not. For example, Intersex Human Rights Australia have drawn down from these instruments to inform how they believe people with intersex variations should be treated under the law. They were a part of our community consultations that led to the inclusion of sex characteristics as a protected attribute under the Victorian Equal Opportunity Act this year. The Equal Opportunity Act, or the EOA, is another way that our rights are protected here in Victoria. It's a law that makes it unlawful to discriminate against people who have a protected attribute, which means that people shouldn't suffer from discrimination because of, for example, their age, race, gender, or any other protected attribute. We have also worked with LGBTIQ plus communities so that this year, the definitions of sexual orientation and gender identity have also been updated in the EOA. I'll give you the link on the page so you can read more. The Victorian government has also committed to this year, I Am Equal, a future directions paper for Victoria's intersex community. In this, the government has committed to a vision of a Victoria where people with intersex variations are recognised as having natural variations in sex characteristics. This means their human rights are being upheld, which will also assist them to achieve better health and wellbeing outcomes. I'll put some links on the page so you can download and find these for yourself. I'd encourage you to have a read and educate your families and friends as well. From me to you, wishing you an inspiring Human Rights Week. Bye for now.